Hi, my name is Dennis Smith. So this image that you can see now is all about astro and light painting and a big ass tree here in the Flinders Ranges. Uh, it's a technical photograph for a couple of reasons. And the most, probably the first reason that it's technical is because when we're shooting astro, uh, our cameras are super sensitive. So we're going to be set at ISO 1600, 3200, so on and so forth, which means the light painting tools we use are going to have to be really dim so that they don't blow out and get excited. Now, I know in the crazy world of astrophotography, a lot of people will composite images. There'll be, image, they'll, uh, you know, they create a foreground image and then astro and join it all together. The brutal honesty for me is two things. Firstly, I'm really shit at Photoshop and probably can't do those things that they do. But the other is, and this comes from my light painting background, is I have a pretty firm philosophy of delivering to you images that you're going to know came straight out of the camera. Um, so yeah, I'll talk you through, let's have a chat through that particular tutorial. So this tree that is here behind me is massive. It looks doesn't look that big in the, in the shot here. Um, and I'll show you in a minute how massive it is. But basically all we're doing is I have used an app. I use the Photographer's Ephemeris. And I know that down the creek bed tonight at about 2 a.m., the Milky Way is going to be sitting just above the tree. Now this is my plan. This is the plan. But we always know that things can go awry. So I know that looking down the creek there's going to be the milky way there and my plan is to have the tree in the shot i'm going to backlight the tree now the way we're going to do that is using this so this is a very uh so this is a this is a light stand uh, and on the light stand i put this which is a uh this is a, a pretty bright torch this particular one here is about uh, is about a thousand lumens and it's got a diffuser on it and what I do is I put it onto this light stand here and you'll see this later when it's dark but it's good to describe now I tip it on its side and then what I do is I stick this light stand way up about two and a half maybe three meters and that's going to sit on the opposite side of the tree to the camera uh, and that's going to illuminate the ground behind the tree it's going to put a bit of an edge light on the tree and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of work in front of the tree. So I'm going to stand there with a torch so it illuminates me. I'm going to do an actual bit of light painting in front of the tree and you'll see that. But we're going to keep this image tonight really simple. Nothing flash. It's all about creating a big open landscape, which is what the Flinders Ranges is all about. Um, and we want to create scale. So you're going to see me in the image and I'm going to be tiny in comparison to the tree. Uh, and of course, we're going to see the Milky Way. It is going to be gigantic. So nice and simple, nice, simple torch for backlighting. It's going to be set really dim. We're going to be using a couple of tools. One is a blade. So this is a nice, simple blade. It's one of our new Excaliburs uh, and it's attached to a very bright torch. I'll talk you through it later on, but we're going to have it set very dim. I'll show you a bit of scale on the tree. Watch this, I'm gonna go down to the tree now. Woo it is a big tree. Doesn't look like it from way up there, but it's pretty mega, that's for sure. Alrighty, I'll see you when you I'll see you when it's dark. We'll talk through how we're putting the shot together. Um, I'll make sure it's nice and clear, but while we've got a little bit of sunlight left, I just wanted you to see the tree and the light and just sort of get a bit of scale. I'll see you soon. Alrighty, well the light is starting to go and it's uh, there's a moment here where I'll talk to you a little bit about planning. So it always, the success of any great shot is all in the planning. And the thing with uh, a location like this, we are in the middle of nowhere and we use a phenomenal, well, I use a phenomenal app called the Photographer's Ephemeris, and you can use any app. There's a few photo pills, I think, does it. But basically, I know that after midnight, the Milky Way is going to be coming straight, pretty much just sitting above this tree up here. And so what that means is that around about now, because I, kind of, I know the direction it's going to be coming from, I can start planning now. Uh, exactly where a the camera is going to be, where the um, where the, the the torch behind the tree is going to be, um, and why is that important? Well, it's important for a whole lot of things. It means that if we're nice and organised and we plan, it means that we don't have to worry too much about uh, it when it's dark. And when you're here in a place like this, the light is almost gone. So it's tricky for me to show you. Is the ground is quite rough. 
So I've already had a good look around the tree. Uh, I know that there's a couple of big logs on the ground and we want to be careful of those. Uh, but I know where my big light is going to be going behind the tree. I kind of know where my camera is going to be. Because when there's no moon, when you're just working with uh, the Milky Way, it gets dark. And if that means dark means a little bit dangerous. So we want to be thinking about planning. I know where the Milky Way is going to be. I know where my camera is going to be. I know where my light behind is going to be. But I'll take you over and I'll show you something really interesting. Okay, so you can see we're down here, by, we're down here at the base of the tree. And the reason I want to bring you down here and have a chat is you can see behind me there's all these rocks and bits and pieces on the ground uh, and wood and, and so on and so forth and we need to be really careful later on uh, that we just we, we you know we're careful around here so while there's still a bit of light I've come down here I've had a good look around I kind of know that I can't be just stomping around in the dark now the reason for that is our exposures are pretty short tonight. Now I'm going to be using the remote to start the camera, but we can't just wander in with a headlamp on. We just can't just wander in with a light on. So I've familiarised myself with the ground, uh, and the reason we don't just clear a big space is because I love this texture on the ground. It's going to give some beautiful light in our foreground. Hopefully, we'll light it a little bit. Um, but it's a very, it's a beautiful space. But this is where we will be doing our light painting later. So I'm nice and familiar with the space. Um, yeah, so that we can be nice and careful. Here's a gorgeous thing. The wind has absolutely gone. It is totally still. And silent. Oh, it's so gorgeous. It's so wonderful. All right. I'll take you and show you another cool thing about this. Alrighty, so now we're uh, so now we're over on the opposite side of the tree. So over here, you can see up here. This is where our camp is up here. Hey guys, give us a wave! Woo! The legends. So this is this is the other side of the tree, and this is where uh, the torch is going to be up on a light stand. So just like the other side, I'm over here figuring out kind of what the space is like, what the ground's like. You can see behind me here these these old stumps now. Oh, I'll show you, you know, they can be quite dangerous. If you're walking around in the dark and you slip and fall and you fall onto one of those bits of wood, they can be pretty dangerous. So again, familiarizing myself with the space. Remember, when you, it, it's different when there's a full moon. When we're under the Milky Way, pitch black. So it's all about safety. It's all about familiarizing yourself with the space, making sure that once that, once that light has gone, it's nice and safe. Um, now, here is a perfect example. If you're walking around in the dark and you trip and you fall onto here, oh my god, shit is going to get real. It is going to really hurt. So you've got to be careful when you're walking around. Very dangerous. And there might be snakes in here. Yeah, wicked. The great thing about the great thing about that, uh, the great thing about having the light up on the light stand. Uh, is that it's going to illuminate um, everything in this around the back of the tree and, and hopefully create a shadow on the other side, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, it should look really gorgeous. Wicked. Alrighty, here's a mad thing that's just happened. So I was walking across our camp and I saw our big ass tree and I saw there was a slither of color on the horizon. So we can't piss around with this because that light will be gone soon. I turn my headlamp off. Basically what I'm gonna do is I wanna go stand under the tree with this light. We wanna try and illuminate the foreground and the tree with the torch and we wanna get some color in the sky. So I can't piss around because there's not a lot of light left on the thing. Let's talk through what we're doing. Claris. ST15R with a diffuser. I've got the Olympus M1 Mark III, uh, a wide angle lens. I'm set to F4. I've focused on the tree. I'm going to walk over with my headlamp on and I'm going to use the trigger to set it off. Let's not piss around. Let's go. All right. Still got audio. Okay. Headlamp on. Walking over with a bit of a jog. We don't want to lose that color. Okay. Headlamp off. Shutters open, torch up, 
nice and still. You've got to stay really still because any movement is going to get seen. Nice and still. Hopefully the tree's being illuminated. Turn the torch off. And the shutter's closed. I can see that. I can see the red light on the top, but also my remote was beeping. That's weird. All right, let's have a look. Let's see how that went. <laughs> that is mad. Oh my gosh. Let's take, I'll turn this light on. All right. Let's take a bit of a look at this because it's pretty crazy, really. So I'm going to press play. Oh my gosh. And this is just from, this is just from walking past and seeing a slither of color on the horizon. And normally I was, I was kind of thinking we wouldn't be getting into it until it was pretty dark. But let's zoom in on that. And I bet you anything you like. The tree is super sharp, which is rad. Look at that. I'm there. The foreground, look at all that detail on the foreground. And then the, you've got that slither of light along the horizon. And then check this. The moon is there as well. Always be keeping an eye out for the special things. So in this instance, I saw that sort of gold on the horizon. I thought that would just be really nice to try with our light under the tree. Um, and it worked really well. It bodes well for later. Alrighty, well the, uh, the sun has definitely gone and it is dark and late and it is a little bit cold. We talked a little bit earlier about the positioning of the light up on the uh, stand. That's over on the other side of the tree at the moment. I put that up. Uh, I've set that to like a medium brightness to see how we go to start with. Camera is going for the next little while. It will be set to yeah, ISO 1600. So we're going to be on ISO 1600, f2.8. I've got the, a very wide angle lens, 7 to 14, so we're really wide. Uh, I've got the tree framed up. But basically the process is going to be this. I'm going to set my remote uh, to a 5 second delay. So I've got that on a 5 second delay. Uh, I'm going to go out. Uh, I have the torch turned off, so I'm going to have... For the first image, I'm going to have this torch here. I'm going to have it in my hand and I'm going to have the remote away. I know the exposure's not started. I'm going to stand under the tree and go one, two, three, off, and then walk back. And now the exposure is 30 seconds, so it'll go for 30 seconds just to do all its bits and hopefully get this nice big chunky Milky Way we've got above here. So let's not muck around, let's get into it. Um, First things first, let's uh, focus up. So if you don't have a uh, starry sky autofocus, I can about to show you, you can use a torch like we normally do. But I want to show you something really amazing. It's a feature, uh, I'm going to turn this light here off because I know that's going to affect it. And this is the feature of the new, of the new Olympus M1 Mark III. And what it does is it will, uh, it'll basically, it may or may not work with this video light on, but it just looks out into the scene. I've set the focus area, um, I've set the focus area to be quite, quite large. Uh, so I've got it sort of up there because that's off to the side of the tree. So that's the area. And I press the back button and what it does is it goes out and it just looks for stars in the sky and it should lock onto them. Now, I wonder if this is going to give us... Oh, no, there it is. Boom. So in a couple of seconds, it's locked onto the stars up in the sky uh, pretty quickly, which is just amazing how it does that. Uh, I'm going to turn this video light off and let's make an image. All right. Okay, so you may or may not be able to see me wandering out. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's go. So I've got my, um, got my torch here and my diffuser, my Claris torch, and I've got my diffuser on there. So I'm gonna head out. So I'm walking out under the tree with the torch on, because I've got my remote with a five second delay. Okay, I've got my position here under the tree. Turn the torch off. Four, three, two, one. 
and I can look back and I can see the red come onto the thing. So I'm going to get into my position. I'm going to go one, two, three, and off. And it's amazing how, now obviously walking back, uh, you want to be a little bit careful. Okay, so all we need when the, when the camera is set to that incredible sensitivity, ISO 1600 wide open at f2.8, just a couple of seconds with the torch is really all we need. All right, here we go. So we're at 30 seconds. Let's take a look at that. Woohoo! That is so good. All right, so we've got the tree. It's in focus. Yeah, I'm there and I'm in focus. And there we go. Up the top there, we've got a bit of Milky Way. Now, it's not fully down where I would like it to be. I want to try and get a little more of the Milky Way. I know it's up there, and I'm just getting a little touch of it. Now, this lens is at f2.8, so we can probably go for a little more sensitivity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump the ISO. I'm going to bump the ISO up to 3200. So I'm in bulb, bulb mode, ISO 3200. Now, what does that mean? It means that when we're out there, I was happy with the brightness. If we press play again, I was happy with the brightness of the torch in front of the tree. I'm happy with the light, the, the, the light coming from behind the tree. So what it means is I probably just need to be a little quicker with this. So I'm probably only going to go for two seconds with the torch this time. All right, let's make sure that is there. Okay, so light on to walk out into the same position. Four, three, so I've got my countdown, two, one. Looking back, I can see the shutters just come open. So I'm just gonna go on, one, two, off. Because we've increased the sensitivity by quite a bit. All right, let's have a look at that. Holy shamoly, there we go. That's incredible, so let's take a look at that. All right, there's a lot going on here. I mean, look, ISO 3200, it's gonna get a bit messy. The thing to remember always is what you're seeing here on the monitor is, um, is, a, is a JPEG. Obviously these are raw and you'll see, you know, you'll see when we post post this, and we'll, I'll show you on the screen now how they look without it. Now, what I love is that just as I planned, the galactic core is right above the tree, which is so incredible. And for the next hour or so, it's gonna start coming down uh, and almost into the tree. So it's gonna be amazing, and I'm really excited about that. Next thing I'm gonna do is let's, let's have a bit of a play with one of these new blades. So uh, look, I'm not changing the color on a lot. I've been using this tonight, but what it is, it's one of my new, uh, I'm, I, at the moment they're called Excalibur blades. I, I don't know, it's, it's, they'll need to work on me. So I might turn it on and have it up like, yeah, that's it and we might get a bit of glow in the foreground and in the background. Let's give that a bit of a nudge, eh? I've got an idea, watch this. Okay. Wandering out. Now I'm gonna bump the ISO back up actually a bit for this one. Let's go to 1600. Actually, because we're not doing an orb, we're gonna reduce. So let's go straight back up to ISO 3200. Seems how we've been fussy and all. All right, in position. Headlamp off, five, four, Three, two, one, open. One, two, three, four, five. Whoa, that's more like it. Let's take a look at that. Wow, that's so good. Alrighty, well there we go. There's a um, 
getting pretty late now. It's uh, I think it's about two o'clock, which is which is a bit of a hoot. Um, but sometimes when you're chasing things like the Milky Way, it takes a little bit of that sort of effort. But what I want you to remember, and if you take anything away from this little night here, is that these shots, although they're very simple, what makes them incredibly complicated is that they take a lot of time to plan. It's a long way away. It sort of took us five, six hours to get here today. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it, I had to drive in on sand, so it's a little risky that way. Uh, my friends have popped back to bed already. Um, so quite a, it's a lot of planning involved. We had to watch the weather for a week because it's a big effort to get up here. Uh, now that we're here, uh, I had to make sure that I knew where the Milky Way was. I wanted to know where that galactic core was so that when I'm here around the tree, I, knew, I know already I'm going to need to be pointing down the creek. Uh, I know the direction I need to be looking at to get it uh, and then we were lucky with the weather i knew it was going to be okay we had some cloud earlier in the night but what i want you to take away from this sometimes it's difficult to get scale and what i love about this spot is we've got i wanted to have me in the shot so you can see my scale then we have the size of the tree because it's a bloody huge tree but then what we have is the scale of the universe and having those three in there gives us a sense of scale um, for me, it's quite a personal thing. The Flinders Ranges is a very personal place for me. This tree is quite a special tree for me. It's tucked away down in a creek bed. Uh, it took me a very long time to find it, but it's a beautiful place I love to come to now. Sometimes I come here when there's a full moon. Sometimes I come here for sun, you know, beautiful sunsets and sunrises. But what I know is I love this tree. Um, so I hope you took something away from tonight. Um, and if it's not technical, I hope it encourages you to go out and find a big space uh, and create something and try and make some scale. Um, yeah, tomorrow night we're staying up here in the Flinders and we're going to have a look at a ruin, which uh, one of my favorite ruins as well. But the Milky Way will be out again. Um, I'm gonna have a bit of a play now. I'm gonna turn this recorder off and I'm gonna make some images for me. Thanks for coming to the Flinders with me. Welcome to the School of Light. If you really enjoyed this video, it'd be fantastic if you could subscribe and maybe share it with a friend. Um, these tutorials are all about, and the reason we've made them free is uh, so that uh, everyone can have a crack in, and have a go at light painting. It's a beautiful art form, and I hope that you've had fun, and I hope you can share it with someone that does. Uh, head over to the Light Painting Tool Shop. All of the tools we've used tonight are there, uh, and hopefully something I've made can help you on your light painting journey. Have a great time. I'll see you tomorrow night. Peace.